I like to mill my own lumber whenever I get the chance using an Alaskan chainsaw mill. And I was milling up this oak log and it was on top of a pile of other logs. And it was just embedded in there too much and it was too heavy for me to get out by myself. So what I did was I cut some of the slabs off the top of it, lightened the load, and then I could pull it off of the stack. But in milling it, I also hit metal multiple times that was just embedded inside the tree. And the result was some pretty wonky slabs. So today we're gonna fix that by building a slab flattening jig. The sled's complete, so let's talk a bit about the construction. The sides are made with two by eights, and I cut these at seven inches wide, and then I framed it on the inside with two by fours that I cut at three inches wide. And then I gave myself about three feet of working space in between. And then I put a piece of MDF on the top, and the whole purpose of this is just to have a nice slippery surface 
That way it's easier to put slabs on and off and I have plenty of work area in case I need to put some shims anywhere underneath the slabs. I also drilled a couple holes here on the side and that lets me put a clamp in. I can clamp it onto my sled and then clamp it onto the bench so this thing's not going anywhere. Now let's talk a bit about the jig that holds our router. I am recycling this from a previous project, so I'm not going to show you step by step how to make it, but I'll talk a little bit about the construction. So this is made out of three quarter inch plywood. I've got a couple uh, two inch wide strips here and then a couple blocks, and that gave me about a two inch wide gap in between. So that's plenty of space for a router bit to fit through. My router fits into the jig. And I've got just enough play that I can move this easily back and forth without too much friction, but it's not going to wiggle around too much. And then I put a couple blocks here in the corners, and these are just scrap pieces of wood. And the purpose on this is that whenever I move my router from one side to the other, it'll bump into this block, and then my router bit won't carve into the side of my sled. And then lastly, I installed dust port. So this is for my shot vac. So if you're going to do this at home, remember, dust is gonna get all over the place. So you've gotta wear a respirator, wear eye protection. I'm gonna be running ventilation through the whole shop. I'm also gonna have the shop windows open with a box fan blowing the dust out. But regardless of that, I figure it doesn't hurt to hook up a shop vac and maybe that will catch some of the fine particles of the dust and that's the stuff I really wanna worry about. When it comes to router bits, you can use pretty much any straight bit that you want to use for this operation. Just remember that the smaller the diameter of the bit, the more passes you're going to have to make across the entire slab. You can go out and you can buy some pretty fancy bits that are like two inches wide in diameter and those things are great. Or you could just use a three quarter inch straight bit if that's what you have lying around. It's critical that we have a good flat foundation for stacking our slabs. That way our wood's going to dry flat. And to do that, I made a bunch of these. These are lumber levelers. And this is Mark one of the design. Uh, I've had it for over a year. It's worked great. So we'll see if I need to make any changes in the future. I don't know. But this is how they're made. I made these from quarter inch tube steel. And for the bottom bar, 
I drilled and tapped holes all the way down. And then I threaded in a bolt and a washer and a nut. So they are locked into place. And then I put another nut and another washer on top of each bolt. And then for the top bar, I simply drilled holes. The top bar fits right on top of the bolts. And then I can simply turn the nut to raise or lower any of the portions that uh, I need to maneuver. So the next step is I'm gonna lay all these out where I'm gonna stack all the slabs out, make sure that they're all nice and flat, and then we're gonna start stacking lumber. I got the levelers in place on where I'm gonna stack the slabs and then make sure that they're all perfectly level. What I did was I took some string and I tied it from one corner to the opposite corner then this corner to this opposite corner. And then in between where those lines meet, uh, I want them to seem like they should be in the same space, meaning that I don't want the top string to push down the bottom one. I don't want the bottom one to push down on the top one. And I don't want a gap in between. And once I get to that point, I know that my area is flat. Then I just take the bolts and I adjust them for the center levelers to get those up so that they are touching the string too. And at that point, we're all set. The jig worked great, and I've got a few more slabs I need to flatten. If you got some slabs at home, hopefully this video gave you a good visual of how you can make your own jig. Please hit the subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on the latest happenings in my shop. And until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.